Hey guys, welcome to the video on classification. Now, I have three goals for you guys today. First off, I want you guys to be able to explain how organisms are classified. Secondly, I want you to, to compare Aristotle's method of classification and Linnaeus's method of classification. And finally, I want you guys to be able to construct an actual dichotomous key. Now, the last part right here will be done in the practical work. So if you cannot do this by the end of the video or haven't seen this, don't be surprised because we are going to look at it more in detail later on. Before I start, though, I want to review a key term that is important to understand this, and that is the idea of morphology. Morphology is defined as the structure and form of an organism and one of its parts. Now, what that kind of means is this, is that that means it's basically what an organism looks like or what parts it has. And for my little example here is that I put down cats are furry demons with claws. Now the two morphological parts of this would be furry because cats have fur and claws because cats have little claws. The demons part is my little add-on there. They're not really demons, unfortunately, but I think they are. Now, classification. Classification is organizing and grouping organisms based on shared traits. So, for example, if you have four paws, fur, furry, you have evil eyes, and you have a tail, we would call you a cat. If you had four limbs, you stood up on two of them, and you had reposable thumbs, we would call you a human being. All we're saying with classification is that we look at the traits that animals have and we begin to classify them. We begin to create a rule set for how we name these animals. And we do that based upon their morphology. We do that based upon how they look. So the first classification system came from a guy named Aristotle. Aristotle was an old Greek philosopher and he was well known for doing a whole bunch of random scientific stuff. Now he created his own little classification system that looks sort of like this where he had plants and he broke up plants into three types of plants. He had herbs, shrubs, and trees. He also had animals with red blood and he classified animals with red blood into three different types he had land water and air and he had as you can see here the different kinds of animals would fall into this classification now this system is very simple but it's also not very effective at classifying organisms because it lacks the details you would need to be able to effectively classify one organism or another. So that's where the next system came into being, which is called the Linnaean system, or you can also call it Linnaeus system. Now, Linnaean was, Linnaeus was, you could almost say, he wasn't really the founder, but he was the guy who really put down the ground rules for what's called taxonomy. Taxonomy is the branch of biology that classifies organisms. So their job really is just to look at animals and plants and other types of organisms, and they put them into different categories. Now, in order to do this, Linnaeus created a system called binomial nomenclature. Binomial nomenclature is a way of naming animals based upon a certain system. So, now, each species name has two parts, and that got moved over a little bit, but just bear with me here. Now, there's a first part here, which is Ursas, and there's a part here called Americanus. Now, if you see this name here, you are always going to have the American black bear. Now, whenever you have a Linnaean system, it needs to be written in italics. So, that's how you know you are looking at Linnaeus' system is because of how it's written. Now, you might be asking the question, well, what does this stuff right here mean? What do we mean Ursus Americanus? Because there are other things. Almost every single bear is going to have the word Ursus in front of it right here, but th this part right here is going to be different. It's very specific to the species. Now, here's sort of how the system works. And you're probably looking at this and saying, oh my lord, what's going on here? Well, here's the way to look at it, is that we classify organisms based upon a system of 
ever-increasing level of being specific, of being accurate. We start off with domain. Now the domain here for the bear, which we have the black bear from the previous example right here. The previous example is the black bear. So let's, let's go through a quick little example problem. What we have here is that it starts off with the eukarya. Eukarya just means that you are an organism that has a nucleus in your cells. That's a very, very broad definition. The next one comes the animalia, which is part of the kingdom. This just says, hey, you're an animal. Then you come into the phylum of chordata. Chordata is a fancy way of saying you have a spinal cord and a notochord. Now you guys don't know what a notochord is yet, but you will learn about that in physiology. But for now, just think of it as you have a spinal cord. Now you have class. Well, you're a mammal, which means that you have mammillary glands, which is something, again, you will learn about later. Then you have the order, and the order is carnivoria, which if you remember from other things, that means carnivore. Carnivoria sounds a lot like carnivore, which means you eat meat. Well, guess what? Bears definitely eat meat. Now, this here has more to do with how their teeth look, but you can think of it like that. Then you have the family, which is Urs, it goes Ursidae. This is just saying you are a member of this group. Now, I don't know what makes you a member of this family, unfortunately. As you're going to learn, there are a lot of groups, groups of families. Then there's the genus Ursus, which puts you in the bear group. And then you have the species. That's pretty much how we classify organisms. As you move up, things get a lot more specific. So that means everything in the Ursus category here is going to have everything a part of these categories. So every single member of Ursus is going to have everything below it. And that's how classification works. Now, I want to toss in some more examples here. Now, as you can see here, there's the Asiatic black bear and the American black bear. And as you can see, they actually have different names right here. The Asiatic black bear is called Ursus theobanius. And this one here is called Ursus Americanus. Now, if you see pictures of these two guys, they look very similar, but they do have some differences. So because they have differences and they do come from different parts of the world, we have a different name for them. Now, if you're curious for humans, humans are called Homo sapiens. And we have ours, so our genus would be Homo, and our species would be sapiens. So this first part here, as I said, it refers to the it refers to the genus part, so this part right here, and the second part just refers to the species name. Now, there's a key term in your book. It's important to understand. It's called taxon. Taxon is just a group of organisms that have a common characteristic. That's a very fancy way of saying it's this stuff right here. So, Ursus is a taxon. Irisidae is a taxon. It's just a term we use that says everything has this characteristic. So, for example, animalia, everything in this taxon is an animal. Chordata, everything in this taxon has a notochord and a spinal cord. Mammalia, everything in the mammalia taxon has mammillary glands. So, it's just a fancy way of saying these terms right here. So, Here's a, here's a quick thing to help you study, because you are going to need to know the, na know the names of each of these taxonomic categories. And I use an acronym like this, where I say, kings play chess on fine glass surfaces. So kings, kingdom, play, phylum, chess, class, on, order, fine, family, glass, genius, surfaces. And this lets you have a quick, easy way to memorize all of these individual taxon names that you are going to need to know for your quizzes later on. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's the basics of classification. So here are the key terms you should know from this lesson. So when you create your Cornell notes, you want to look at these key terms to help you. You can use your book or you can use Google to help you find the names of these key terms. Just make sure that you write them in your own words because it's always better to write things in your own words. It helps you to remember what these things mean. Thank you very much for watching the lesson and I hope you guys are having a great day.